This is part 65 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss object reflection in JavaScript with an example. Object-oriented programming languages like C Sharp and Java support reflection. Reflection allows us to inspect metadata of assemblies, modules, and types. Since JavaScript is also an object-oriented programming language, it also supports the concept of reflection. Let's understand object reflection in JavaScript with an example. We'll be using this employee object in this demo. Notice that this object has got four public properties, that is first name, last name, gender, and email. In addition, it also has got three public methods, get full name, get email, and get gender. And here, we're constructing an employee object using this employee constructor function. Now let's see how to use object reflection in JavaScript to retrieve all the public properties and methods of this employee object. So we want the output to be something like this. So notice that we have all the four public properties and then all the three public methods of the employee object. So if we flip to Visual Studio, here we have the exact same code that we have seen on the slide. Here we have the employee constructor function. And here we are defining our three public methods of the employee object. And then finally, we are constructing the employee object using the employee constructor function. Now, let's use a for loop. And let's name this variable property in employee object. So basically, we are going to retrieve all the properties and public methods of the employee object using this for loop. And then what we want to do is write the names of those properties and methods to the web page. And let's also append an HTML break so we get the each property and method name on a separate line. So with this change, let's go ahead and run this. And we should get all the public properties, first name, last name, gender, email, and all the public methods, get full name, get email, and get gender of the employee object. Now at the moment, we only have the property and method names. Now let's say we also want to retrieve the values. So if you look at the employee object here, these are the values for first name, last name, gender, and email properties of the employee object. So we want to display the values as well, you know, along with the property and method names. So let's see how to achieve that. So we have the property. So this is going to print the name of the property and method. And let's separate the names and values with a colon symbol. And then these properties and methods, they belong to the employee object. So I can use the employee object and the property name like this to retrieve the value of that property within that employee object. So let's save these changes and reload this page. Notice that now, along with the property names, we also get the values. So for first name, the value is mark. For gender, the value is male. And for email, it is a at a.com. And if you look at the methods, notice that we get the method definition as its value. So that's the um, you know get full name function implementation. And this one is the implementation for get gender. Now, let's see how to retrieve only the public properties. So here, we are getting both the public properties as well as methods. Now, let's say our requirement is to retrieve just the public properties of the employee object and not the methods. Method names should be excluded. Now, to achieve that, we can use an if condition here. If we use the type of keyword, so type of you know, employee of property, if that is not equal to function. Only then print the name of the property and its value. So now when we reload this, notice that we only get the public properties functions. We are filtering them out. So if employee property you know, the type of that is not equal to function, only then write the property and its value. Now, on the other hand, if you want just the public functions of the employee object, change this to equal to. And now, 
when we load this page, we should get only the public functions of the employee object. So notice that we have got the three methods, get full name, get email, and get gender. Now, when two objects are related through inheritance, the child object will have access to the parent object methods and properties. Now, at the moment, if you look at the example that we have, we don't have any inheritance relationship here. We only have the employee object. Now, let us go ahead and create you know, a permanent employee object and make it inherit from the employee object. So I'm going to create another function here. I mean, construct a function. Let's call this permanent employee equals function annual salary. So this permanent employee object is going to have one public property, annual salary. And we are going to make this permanent employee inherit from the employee object. So permanent employee dot prototype equals employee object. So we already have created the employee object. Since we have made the employee object the parent of the permanent employee, now this permanent employee object will have access to all of the employee objects, public properties and methods. Okay? Now when we use you know the same code for the permanent employee object. Now let's go ahead and create a permanent employee object. Let's name this PE equals new permanent employee and let's pass 50,000 as annual salary. So now we are going to loop through this permanent employee object. So for via property in permanent employee, let's remove this. So now when we run this, notice what we get. So now we are looping through the properties of the permanent employee object. So when we reload this page, notice that we get the annual salary property which belong to permanent employee. Now it says the value of the permanent employee annual salary, it says undefined. Why is that? Now look at this. When we construct the permanent employee, we are passing 50,000 as the annual salary, but here the values is undefined. That's basically because here we are indexing it using the employee object and not the permanent employee object. So let's use permanent employee object here and that should give us the value for annual salary. So let's reload this page. Notice that we get the annual salary as 50,000. This annual salary property is defined within the permanent employee object. But all the other properties and methods belong to the employee object, which is the parent of permanent employee. Now, in your project, you may have a requirement where you want to retrieve just the properties that are defined within the permanent employee object. So. If you look at this permanent employee, there's only one property within that object, which is annual salary. So my requirement is I want to retrieve only the properties that are defined within this permanent employee. And I want to exclude the public properties and methods that are inherited from uh, its parent. Now, in order to do that, we can use has own property method. So if the object is permanent employee dot has own property and then we pass the name of the property. So what is this method going to do has own property? This method will return true if that property is defined within the permanent employee object. It returns false if it is inherited. Okay so if this method returns true, then we know that that property is defined within the permanent employee object. In that case, print the name of the property and its value. So let's save these changes, reload this page. Notice that now we get only the annual salary. Now, if you want to load or if you want to print all the public properties and methods that are inherited but not defined within the permanent employee object, then you can simply use not operator like this. So this is going to print all the public properties and methods that are inherited. So let's save these changes and reload this page. Notice that except annual salary, which is defined within the permanent employee object, we get all the other public properties and methods. 
thank you for listening and have a great day